Good day, great and learners! I am Teacher Anna and welcome to another Matinic episode. Today, we will learn about Rational Root Theorem. Are you ready? But before we start, kindly prepare your self-learning module, your pen, and paper to write your solutions and answers as we progress with our discussion. Also, look for a place in your home where you feel comfortable and safe. And most importantly, prepare yourself to watch and listen carefully. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to prove the rational root theorem. Let's begin. If you are using the Mathematics Learners module for grade 10, kindly open it on page 88. If you are using the Compendium of Notes, turn it on page 32. Aside from the Remainder Theorem and Factor Theorem, you should also know about the Rational Root Theorem. But what is Rational Root Theorem? It states that if the polynomial has any rational roots, then they must be of the form positive and negative factors of P over factors of Q, wherein P is the constant term of the given polynomial and Q is the leading coefficient of the given polynomial. Here are the steps in solving using rational root theorem. Step number one. Arrange the polynomial in descending order. In short, it must be in standard form. Example, find all the rational roots of x raised to 3 plus 2x raised to 2 minus 5x minus 6. Looking closely at the given, we can say that the given polynomial is already in standard form because the exponents are in descending order. Step Write down all the factors of the constant term. These are all the possible values of P. When we say constant term, it is a term in a given polynomial wherein it doesn't have any variable. In the given example, that is negative 6. We are looking for the factors of negative 6, meaning to say, we are looking for numbers that when multiplied together, we will come up with negative 6. We have positive 1 multiplied to negative 6 or we can have negative 1 multiplied to positive 6. Aside from 1 and 6, we also have positive 3 multiplied to negative 2 or negative 3 multiplied to positive 2. Or we can simply write that the factors of negative 6 are positive and negative 1, 6, 3, and 2. Step 3. Write down all the factors of the leading coefficient. These are all the possible values of Q. When we say leading coefficient, it is the number included in the leading term aside from the exponent. And when we say leading term, it is the term in the given polynomial wherein it has the highest exponent. In the given example, the leading term is x raised to 3. And we are looking for the leading coefficient in the leading term. We don't see any number, so we suppose that is 1. We have 1x raised to 3, and the leading coefficient is 1. What are the factors of 1? We have positive 1 multiplied to positive 1, negative 1 multiplied to negative 1. Or in short, the factors of 1 is equal to positive and negative 1. Step 4. Apply positive and negative factors of P over factors of Q and list the possible rational roots. The factors of P are positive and negative 1, 6, 3, and 2, while the factors of Q are positive and negative 1. Writing them in the form positive and negative factors of P over factors of Q, we have positive and negative 1, 6, 3, and 2 over 
1. Or in short, we have positive and negative 1, 6, 3, and 2. We need to simplify the given possible rational roots. And when asked if how many possible rational roots do we have, the answer is 8. Because we have positive 1, negative 1, positive 6, negative 6, positive 3, negative 3, positive 2, and negative 2. We have 8 possible rational roots. Step 5. Use synthetic division to determine the values for which p is equal to 0. These are all the rational roots of p of x. In short, the remainder must be equal to 0. In this step, the possible rational roots will serve as the divisor while the polynomial will serve as the dividend. Let's begin with positive 1. Using the synthetic division, the remainder is equal to negative 8. Therefore, positive 1 is not a rational root. Negative 1. Using the synthetic division, the remainder is equal to 0. Therefore, negative 1 is a rational root. Next is 6. Using the synthetic division, the remainder is equal to 252. Therefore, positive 6 is not a rational root. Then we have negative 6. Again, using the synthetic division, the remainder is equal to negative 120. Therefore, negative 6 is not a rational root. Next is positive 3. Using synthetic division, the remainder is equal to 24. Therefore, 3 is not a rational root. Next is negative 3. Using the synthetic division, the remainder is equal to 0. Therefore, negative 3 is one of the rational root of the given polynomial. Next is 2. Using the synthetic division, the remainder is equal to 0. Therefore, 2 is one of the rational root of the given polynomial. Lastly, we have negative 2. Using synthetic division, the remainder is equal to 4. Since the remainder has value, therefore, negative 2 is not a rational root. Therefore, Negative 1, negative 3, and 2 are the rational roots of the given polynomial. But what if we have many possible rational roots? Do we need to check them all if the remainder is equal to 0? The answer is no. We don't have to do that. In this case, we will apply the fundamental theorem of algebra. If p of x is a polynomial equation of degree n and with real coefficients, then it has at most n real roots. For example, if we have x raised to 20 minus 1 equal to 0, the number of real roots is at most equal to 20. Another example, if we have x raised to 3 minus 2x raised to 2, minus 4x plus 8 equals to 0. At most, the number of real roots is equal to 3. In short, if the highest exponent is 3, at most, the real roots are equal to 3. So while checking the remainder using synthetic division, if you already proved that the three possible rational roots are real rational roots, you don't need to check the other possible roots. But, it's only applicable if the real roots are equal to the degree of the polynomials. There are cases where in the degree is 3 while the rational roots are only equal to 2. So you don't have any choice but to check them on. Now, ready your pen and paper and try to answer this one. Find the possible rational roots of 2x raised to 4 
plus x raised to 3 minus 19x raised to 2 minus 9x plus 9. Again, find the possible rational roots of 2x raised to 4 plus x raised to 3 minus 19x raised to 2 minus 9x plus 9. I'll give you one minute to find the possible rational roots. Okay, time is up. The possible rational roots of 2x raised to 4 plus x raised to 3 minus 19x raised to 2 minus 9x plus 9 are positive and negative 1, positive and negative 1 half, positive and negative 3, positive and negative 3 over 2, positive and negative 9, and positive and negative 9 over 2. In the previous activity, we only check for the possible rational roots. But what if they are asking you to check if that possible rational roots is real rational roots of the given polynomial? So in order for us to identify that, we need to use the synthetic division. So using the synthetic division, the rational roots of the given polynomial are negative 3, negative 1, 1 over 2, and 3. And that's all you need to know about the Rational Root Theorem. Again, I am Teacher Anna, and see you for another Matinic episode.